We have so many concerns out there, you know, adding to the volatility and uncertainty. One of them, you could argue, is foreign policy with uh, James Mattis leaving as the Secretary of Defense, the president expressing his concern about other uh, nations as well, former uh, U.S. ambassador to the EU under <laughs> President Obama. Anthony Gardner is our next guest. He happens to be here in studio in New York. It's good to see you. Good to be on the program. Last time we spoke was during the Brexit um, breaking news. You were in London at the time. So that's one of the things that is out there. And now you add in kind of the uncertainty here in the U.S. Um, are you... Are you worried about the state of relations between the United States and the rest of the world, or should we be, and if so, why? Well, I'm terribly worried about the state of relations between the U.S. and the rest of the world. You know, I've been worried for a year and a half uh, that there's some serious geopolitical risks that the market has been underestimating. Such as? Well, trade is one thing. I've been saying for a year that the risks of an undermining of what's called the rules-based system, uh, including the World Trade Organization, uh, you know, coming apart is being underestimated. Underestimated? I would have thought, you know... Trade concerns are, are in this market. Every investor well, we talk to is concerned about them. Certainly. Now they are, but when I used to go around Europe and the rest of the world warning about what could happen, I basically got a yawn, you know, a collective yawn. Now people are taking this seriously. No, I get your point. People, in other words, at the beginning, everyone was assuming, and to their detriment, and a lot of people got caught on the wrong side of this trade in financial markets, that there would be more deals cut than there have been. That's absolutely right. Yeah. And what's concerning me is that the markets have been trading on short-term news and not distinguishing between the signal and the noise. For example, in Buenos Aires, when there was the, you know, the meeting with Xi Jinping, they had made an announcement it was going to be a big, beautiful deal. Yeah. The next day, there was a total disagreement about what actually had been agreed. Markets go down. There was a meeting between Trump uh, and uh, Juncker, the uh, president of the European Commission, they announced a big, beautiful deal at the Rose Garden, uh, and the markets went up. The next, de you know, the next weeks, there was confusion mm -hmm. about actually what they had agreed. Markets go down. There's been very little effort to actually pierce through this fog. Now, what about next year economically? We keep hearing about how last year's story when we were going into 2018 was about synchronized global growth, and now it's sort of the opposite. And maybe it hasn't quite gotten here in the U.S. There are concerns about growth slowing down, but Europe in many ways is, is really in trouble, right? Europe is in trouble. Uh, growth rates are going down, but one can't really talk about Europe right, as a collective, because mm -hmm. one really has to look at country by country. There's some countries that are actually performing quite well, not only Germany, by the way. Well, Germany Scan slowed down, no? Well, Germany slowed down, but it's still growing uh, fairly robustly in Scandinavia as well. Uh, UK has come down significantly. It used to be the best performer. Now it's among the worst performers, partly because of uncertainties of Brexit. Yep. So one has to really go at a country by Italy's country level. Got sort of a mess on its hands, right? Well, that's nothing new, unfortunately. Italy's been living with uncertainty for a long time, but arguably worse than it has and been. And France for a while. as well with the protests. So, which area should we be if we're being most worried about something that might kind of come, not only affect us, but just affect global growth overall? Which part of Europe concerns you the most? Is it the UK because of Brexit? Well, I'm certainly concerned about uh, Brexit, uh, certainly a hard no-deal Brexit, uh, which uh, although is a low probability, is something that could happen. But even if it's not a no-deal hard Brexit, uh, and I think there will be a deal, there will be uncertainty in the UK for a long time. For you think reasons. there'll be a deal? What I think there will be a deal. Uh, well, there could be a vote, something that even a few months ago was considered to be improbable. It could actually happen. There could be her deal, Prime Minister May's deal, improved somewhat with some trimmings, let's say, yeah. uh, with regard to the new partnership that's been offered by the EU to the UK. Uh, but, you know, there's going to be uncertainty in this market, and our businesses that I used to work with quite a lot when I was at Post in Brussels right. are making decisions, have been making decisions, and are slowly diversifying their risks when necessary. What's an example of that? What are they doing? Lots of banks. Those who didn't have already subsidiaries uh, in continental Europe or in, the, in Ireland uh, yeah. have, have uh, established them so that they can continue to provide services after Brexit Day. But there are a lot of manufacturing businesses who are really exposed to this issue of tariffs, you know, for products brought into the UK and products sold to the continent, are, are completely re-engineering their supply lines. Any optimism that the trade story gets better next year? In other words, deals are starting to be cut, whether it's US and EU, US and China, or things get get worse before they get better? Well, I certainly hope they get better, and yeah. I hope there's a deal with China. But look, I am extremely pessimistic about this for a whole bunch of reasons. The EU has tabled a very detailed proposal about how to reform the World Trade Organization. There's been no engagement from this administration on that paper. And you know what? There's 90 percent overlap in our interests on what we should do to make that organization more effective. We should be working with the European Union rather than pointing a gun in its head. 
to address the issues of technology transfer you've been talking yeah. about in this program, China, and yeah. joint venture laws and so forth. And we're not doing that. I'll get, just give you two examples here of how this has real consequences for businesses. Okay. You know, we're joining Russia in a WTO case right now with regard to the measures that it took against Ukraine during the Crimea crisis, in which Russia says we have a national security exemption. Yeah. And if we invoke that, judges cannot, uh, you cannot rule on the case. Saudi Arabia is the same thing in its efforts to embargo a gutter, right? Hmm. Uh, where we are taking the side of Saudi Arabia saying you have the right to invoke national security and there's no right for judges under trade rules to decide. Yeah. If that happens, we're in the law of the jungle. All right. So there are, well, reasons to be, well, I guess to use your term, pessimistic. Thank you, Ambassador, for coming in anyway. We appreciate much. it. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, <laughs> even with all that said.